Well, hello, racing fans, and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for the 22nd of March. We, as always, in Cabeja, and we race at Fairview on the turf track. And what's on the betting menu? Well, let's have a look before we hand over and welcome our analyst and our expert down in uh, the uh, Port Elizabeth area, who is none other than Grant Paddock. Well, eight races on the go, so everything will begin at 12.35 and we'll end off at 16.35. Well, the man is in form. Each time that I've worked with him, he's been on the button. So, uh, Grant, well done on last week. Brilliant. Good tipping. Morning, DDs. Morning, Panthers. Yes, thank you very much. It seems like when the two of us go together, we make a good a good team. We've already um, struck it well lately, and uh, hopefully the Panthers have made a few pounds. And um, looks like a decent card for two, for tomorrow. Weather's good. It's going to be a hot day at the course tomorrow, and um, hopefully we can put the Panthers in the right direction. Well, let's get straight into it, Grant. Race number one begins at 12.35. It will begin the bar pot, and it's a juvenile plate for Phillies. And we'll see these young horses stepping out all over the country nowadays. And uh, some of them uh, will be standouts like we have up in Gauteng with the likes of Almond C and Pistol Pete. But uh, Port Elizabeth, over the years, they've produced some good young horses. Let's have a look at the betting here in race number one. Number one, Blown in the Wind, 11 to 10. Number two, Blue Palace is at 2 to 1, Grant. Then there's some outside betting support for Queen of Jazz from the Gavin Smith stable from 20 to 1. That's been backed into 14 to 1. They are, uh, you know, unknown in the, in the race, two of them, two unknowns, numbers 3 and 7. I don't know if you've heard anything about those runners, but what you make the first leg of the bipod? Yeah, uh, geez, um, tricky kind of a race once again. I, I, the favourite blown in the wind, I think, is even money. Um, a bit too short for my liking. Had three runs in Cape Town. Doesn't quite finish the race off. And now stepping up to 1,200 at Fairview. Not an easy 1,200 at all. It's a, it's a solid 12. Might find it last little bit wanting. I really like the, the look of the first run of Blue Palace. A very, very good run to splice the main brace, who's now won three on the trot. So that form line for me is way stronger than anything else in the field. I'm taking Blue Palace to win it and win it well from blowing in the wind. There's no talk on the ground for Can't Say No, the three horse, as well as Thread for Life, but I see there was a little bit of money for Thread for Life, a very well-bred horse as well. Oh My Gucci Girl and Queen of Jazz are the improvers, so for me it's two from one and five. Two from one and then five, the roughly for trifectas and quartets and Grant, I'm sure quite confident that two and one will be good enough for that bipod. So he's expecting a form result. They're both at the top of the betting boards. Place accumulator is race number two. It's at 13.10. It's over 1,000 meters, a juvenile plate. Betting here, Grant starting off the place accumulator. Number one, family law at 33 to 10. Number two, Hideki at even money. Then we got three at five to one, four at seven to one, and nine to two, number five, Frosty Reception. I'm just uh, looking at the field, Grant. You know, when you have a look at these young horses, you know, these individuals, uh, they haven't done uh, much wrong. The ones that have won, uh, we're looking at horses that are unbeaten. One of uh, them, of, uh, you know, they're going to get their, their, their reputations dented between numbers one, two, and five all winning first time out. It looks like a hot race here, Grant. It is, it's 100%. It's a very, very nice race, so I must be honest with you. I don't think uh, bookmakers have marked it up correctly. Uh, you know, me, when it comes to juveniles, I'm a big fan of looking at times. This horse, Ravelis, won in an exceptionally fast time last time out. And uh, he beat Sylvonian, who came out and won. He's got four kilos off his back. Seven to one, completely the wrong price. Very, very good value at seven to one, I can tell you that. Haidiki was well, well fancied first time out. They punted him like they knew the result, but he was all out to win. Really, Richard had to really get going, and he just got up. Uh, it's two weeks later. Is he even money shot? Definitely not. Um, 
family law won a very good race, um, also beating Sylvonian, who came out and won. Sylvo um, won at 33 to 1. I don't think it was expected. And then the same can go for Frosty Reception. But they both won. They both won very good races. They both won in the hands, the one and the five. Whereas the two, who's even money, won full out. But he 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 will come on. He did. He's a very very nice horse. I think he'll actually do better over slightly further. But um, the value for me in the race is definitely the four Revelers, uh, especially on the times. I think he'll be. He's a massive runner at the weights, and, and I'm taking the four to beat the two, the one and the five. These. Well, this could be well spotted uh, because uh, if you go straight on a line uh, between uh, uh, himself and play act, and as uh, Grant pointed out, at the weights, the four kgs off could be the master stroke here by Jock Stratum. Though this could be the find in the early part of the meeting for Grant Paddock, seven to one. Well, after this show, that's not going to last. Race two, number four, Revelers, the value two and four going to be the selections there for Grant Paddock. On to the big one, the pick six, which is race number three, 1345, 1600 meters grant. It's a maiden plate for fillies and mares. And this starts off the pick six. So number one, Crystal Maiden is at 11 to 10. Uh, horse number two is at four to one. Number three at seven to two. And then number eight at five to one. When you analyze this field, it seems like uh, you know, the market has got it right because when you look at the balance of the field, that are all in double figures. There's very little or no form to recommend you, Grant. Yeah, there is very little form. I, I think it's going to go to the new horses here. Yeah. Um, Dees, there's no doubt. You know, the local horses have been well tried. The horse like My True Love, Richard jumps off that to jump onto Crystal Maiden, who's got solid Joburg form. They are trying the blinkers for the first time, probably to sharpen up. I see she's been going over slightly further than the mile. So um, one draw, one thing you don't want to do in a one draw in a maiden plate is, is uh, not have gate speed. You get stuck behind a lot of bad horses. Fairview is a decent track for it with a long straight. Those bad ones normally stop you at about the 600 and you can slide on by. But um, you don't want to be caught on a rail and your opposition gets a break on you. Um, this horse number three, essential for the Kelly Mitchley yard, who I must say had an absolutely marvellous day last week on Friday. Five winners, stable that's really flying high. Kamalo, uh, this horse is putting up some really, really good work. I, I went and watched a gallop of it and a really, really good gallop and a, a, com a, a competitive gallop. And, and I think I think um, the one run that stands out for her is a second, a length and a half to Vix Princess, who I think is in the top division in Johannesburg now with Tony Peter. Massive runner. I'm actually taking the three to beat the one from Elusive Martyr and then My True Love. But I think the, the one and the three are going to suffice here and I'm going for Essential to beat uh, Crystal Maiden. One and the three. And uh, these horses, we're just going to keep an eye on. You know, you mentioned the horses that are debuting for uh, the stables. Uh, nine and ten, we'll just watch how they go first up. 100%. Um, the nine is definitely going to need a, a bit further and needs to uh, improve. And the ten showing decent work, these I can ex I do expect this horse to be in the quartet. Uh, if it was on the poly, I would have said yes, uh, uh, each way chance. But on the grass, I'm not 100% sure. Its work has been uh, very, very good on the poly, but it, it has got a quartet chance. Yeah, I was waiting for the uh, opportune moment to speak about the success of Kerry Mitchley last week, but you touched on it, Grant, and on behalf of the Gallup TV team, well done to Kerry Mitchley and the entire team on a wonderful Friday last week. Race number four, classified stakes over 2,000 meters. This will kick off jackpot uh, one. Grant, if you can just go back to, uh, you know, I like picking your brain for the pick six. Uh, if you can just go back to race number three before we begin race number four. Well, what will be your numbers there if you had to sing, narrow it down for the pick six? I just want to jot it down for the guys. These one and three only. One and three only. Yup, you've managed to help us out there. One and three only in race number three. Grant Paddock is a gentleman that doesn't mince his words or his selections. So race number four, the betting. Number three at eight to one. Number five at three to one. Number six is at six to one. Ten Grant, Harold the Duke from five to one. That is shortened into four to one. And number 13, Dawn Gold at 11 to two. So you've given us two horses. Leg one of the pick six. Uh, what are we going to do in leg number two? of that pick six which kicks off jackpot one 
Uh, let's go through the field first of all. Um, I, I really strong on this horse, Harold the Duke of excellent run first time out. Yeah, he just, just, just needed it for, for Jessica Mutong. Uh, draw one, Kumalo up. If Kumalo can just sit an extra five strides, he should win the race like this. I thought five to one was very generous. He probably should be around 33 to 10, uh, three to one kind of a price. Massive runner in this field. Big respect for Puerto Plata. Won a very good race first, uh, first time out here over distance short of his best at 1200 uh, but a very very weak form line um, I must say Mo Flo won exceptionally good race last time out also uh, beating Bella's first wave which is a, a battler you know they, they got chances to improve I'm really strong on Harold the Duke we're going to need unfortunately we're going to need a couple of horses in the pick six here these I've gone I've gone five horses in the pick six three five seven ten and thirteen um, but I really do like uh, the the ten horse Harold the Duke Three, five, seven, ten, and thirteen. Well, we'll take that grant. It's five runners in a big field of fourteen horses there, but leading with Harold the Duke, who's already found some anti-post money. Five to one into four to one, and uh, on to race number five now, which will be Jackpot Two. It's over sixteen hundred meters. It's a merit rated eighty-two handicap. It's a C division class. Number one, Dowser, eleven to two. Number two at nine to two. Five is at uh, five to one. Then we go on to number six at five to one. And uh, horse number eight at seven to one. Nine at six to one. And ten is at six to one. Yeah, this race, I think it looks like a nice trifecta quartet race, especially, you know, the market says it all. They're betting nine to two the field here. Yeah, these 100% you hit that one on the, on the head. Definitely, I'm very, very strong. I made this horse the value bet of the day. Number five, light without. Um, massive, massive runner. Ke uh, completely the wrong price. Should be marked up favourite. Last time out with Kendall up in a, in a pinnacle plate. He got beaten 0.75 by Peace in Our World and had Brendan James a half a length in front of him. And you put any one of those horses in this race and it's a three, four length win. Massive, massive runner, light without. Wrong price. Should be favourite. Um, definitely the value bet on the day. Big six, we're going to have to add in a couple more. Dowser's holding solid form. Um, also a good run last time out in an 82 handicap, but that's still not the pinnacle that Light Without ran in. Globe Tony coming back from a break. Solid form always there and thereabouts. And Pembroke at the bottom. We're needing five horses, unfortunately, in the pick six. One, two, five, six, and ten. And um, that'll get you through the pick six, but I'm definitely in the camp of Light Without. Grant, you know, just shying away from the form that we're looking at. You know, when it doesn't when it comes to not being a Smith runner or a Kriev runner, with a few of the other stables and with all due respect uh, down in Kabeka, when they got some good form, you can still get a decent price, huh? 100%. You know, these guys are marking up on, 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 on jockeys and trainers. It's unbelievable. You know, it, it makes it a bit more difficult for the punter. He's got to, he's got to look hard. But, um, you know, this is, a, this is a standout. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that the form is, is, is there for everybody to see. And a length and a half to Bournemouth and one and a half to double check. You know, and he's running in, a, in and he's dropped down into, a, I think it's an 82. Yeah, merit rated 82. He's, he's got to be, he's got to be favoured in a field like this. But yet they've marked him five and a half to one. That's it's very, very good value. And if the punters do a little bit of their homework, and um, they, they, they find these kind of horses. Well, I think it could be a find for you. So you've got a 7-1 to one shot earlier on. You know, Harold the Duke is trading at around 4-1. to one. This horse at 5-1, to one, you make a massive runner. If you're not convinced, well, you can use it as a roving banker. But Grant having a fun finding some good horses for us here. Race number 5. What, what, what will be the pick 6 numbers there, Grant? 1-2. Five, six, and ten. One, two, five, six, and ten. So we move along to race number six, and this is the East Cape Guineas. It's a listed race. It's over sixteen hundred meters, and it's for a stake of two hundred and fifty thousand, of which the winner will take home one hundred and fifty-six thousand. Well, let's go into the field and the betting. Where number one, Zumi, is at eighteen to ten. Number two is at seven to two. Horse number three is at seven to one. Number four, Fairy Knight, 16 to 10. And the guy said we'll have that. That's into 14 to 10. And uh, I don't know if you of the opinion, Grant, that this is going to start shorter than 14 to 10 or not. But that is the betting of the field. Yeah, Fairy Knight, uh, he's a five-time winner already. 
uh, what's it, five places from just his 11 runs. The only blemish to his career was once uh, when he ran a fair race that was behind Prince Vihan. Yes, it was behind Prince Vihan. He's a smart, talented horse, isn't he, Grant? Yeah, I did. Listen, yeah, that's a very, very good horse. This, um, he's my nap for the day. Best bet, bankery and everything. He's, since he's been gelded, he's just got better and better. The mile is going to be right down his alley. Richard Furry, one draw. Uh, the pace is going to be on. There's no doubt about that. So he's going to be a very, very hard horse to beat. I'm not going to try. He's helped me the last four times. And I'm not going to go against him. He's dangerous. Obviously, the two Cape Town horses, Zumi, who has beaten him before, I must say. Um, but he seems to have lost his way a little bit. Half decent run last time, I must say. Five and a half lengths to add my command. And um, then Hats Pride. But um, the local, I'm, I'm with the local horse, Fairy Knight. I think he'll win and win well. Well, that is the banker bet. And we'll leave it there. Short and sweet, number four, Fairy Knight. The banker bet for Grant Paddock, and he thinks that maybe a horse like Zumi will be your exact play there. But all in with number four, Ferry Knight, in race number six. Race number seven is the East Cape Sprint Cup. It's a listed race over 1,200 meters, and this is the way they're betting. Number one, which is at 28 to 10. Number two, at 6 to 1. Horse number three from five to two ground that's been shortened into two to one. Number four is at six to one. Then we got double figures, the balance. Well, I don't know where to begin here, Grant. I'd like to begin with this horse called Countdown, uh, who seemed to have, you know, found his form, but then he's in and out, but he's faced some heavy company down in Cape Town. He's running the best races there. Yeah, 100%. He's, uh, he's actually my first pick in this race, but it's an absolute nightmare. There's a lot of good horses running a very, very good sprint race, i got to tell you, for the East Cape Sprint Cup. Um, him and Silver Falcon. Silver Falcon ran here before, uh, but that was on the poly where he, where he beat um, uh, Inherit the Rain. He's holding steady form. He's run behind Thunderstruck. He's actually held by Countdown. So if that form stands up, they should run one, two. But this is an absolute nightmare. From the, of the local horses, Smorgasbord and Prince of Fire. We've got Cliff Top in the race as well. And the Winter Lake, who's a very good horse, over 1,200 on the Fairview grass. Unfortunately, Dees, it's the field in the pick six. Um, there's nothing we can do about that one, but th that's the way it is. And um, I'm actually tipping uh, Countdown to beat Silver Falcon then Smorgasbord and uh, Winter Lake. Well, you know, I'm glad you said how competitive it is because I doubt that Clifftop has been anything above maybe 7-2 to two in his entire career and is now 6-1. to one. Yeah, 100%. But he has lost his way a little bit, this horse. Um, but, but the real cliff top, if he comes to the races and he, he can blow a field like this away, he's a very, very temperamental horse. In and out like a good thing. But um, this is the field race, these, unfortunately. Well, it's not unfortunately. You found us the banker. You found us some good value. We'll multiply it out by 11. The previous race, you've given us a banker. So I'll just work it out and see where we're at here in race number seven. So that is race number seven. Then race number eight, Grant, uh, 1,400 meters. Uh, Phillies in May, 66 handicap. So you've played the field in the previous leg. What you're basically saying is that you're hoping for the pick six, you get the worst result, which is the horse that's at the bottom of the board. Say that arrives and you've dropped a lot of tickets. How confident can you be in race number eight with your selections? How many horses? And uh, these we're going light. Yeah, I, I, I like this race. I think the Michelin Yard have got the right two horses in the field. I believe they Concerto is favourite here, the one horse. All the form has been on the poly. Got to prove itself uh, on the grass. It had one run and it wasn't uh, a very good run at all. I think it got beaten uh, by Lady Renee. It ran six. Um, Bow colour. Massive runner. A very good run uh, to United Express. Got beaten ahead. United Express has won four in a row, and I think she's up to the 82 level already. Got to be a massive runner from a four draw. And then this filly at the bottom, I actually spoke to my son this morning. He prefers the 11 to Bow Color. De Janeiro, a very good run last week. Um, she made all. Just got tired. Just just needed it. Uh, she's come out of it very well, and um, she's going to be the, the biggest danger to Bow Color. So uh, I think it's, this race is going to go to the Mitchley Yard, the 5 and the 11, and I've only got those two horses in the big 60s. Wow. Wow. Grant, you, it's a massive help here. I mean, wow. This is a massive help because this is the way they're betting. 
Number one at 15 to 10 grand, number three at five to one, number five at five to one, and then it's double figures, the balance. So you are just going five and 11. Uh, this horse on top of the betting boards, uh, we're just gonna take a, a, a stab here. That's how you structure it. Uh. Just take a stab and, and, and maybe in include the favorite if you want to. Yeah, listen, if you want to, DJ, you know, I'm purely going on, 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 its, on its form, you know, all its form has been on poly, and there's a massive difference between this poly and the grass, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I'm, I've, got to go, I've got to go that route. She's been, in, she's been, last time out, she ran second in a novice plate. I don't think there's been a winner out of the, yeah, there's been no winners out of the, out of the form line. In a novice plate, she's, she's now dropped down in class, obviously. But um, she's got it all to do, changing of the surface. State of mind probably would have been a better op proposition over the mile, the 4K will help um, but she leaves everything a little bit too late and I think the 1400 they're going to go they're going to go a clip here the, the 11 horse knows how to stretch out and Bocal is no slouch when it comes to that as well if the bigger players want to add in another horse maybe the one but as I say I'm going light I'm going 5 and 11 this well before we get to your best bets and your value bets and the bet you selected I've jotted down your pick 6 and this is how it looks 1 and 3 by 1, 2, 5 and 10 by 1, 2, 5, 6 and 10 are for a banker by the field which is multiplied by 11 by 5 and 11 and guess what grant although you got the field in one leg it actually works out to 88 rand which will give you 10 percent 88 rand 10 percent nothing wrong with that these hopefully that can come home for us well let's uh, hand over to you for your your bets uh, for the meeting grant it's up on screen Thank you very much, Deej. Best bet, race six, number four, Fairy Night. My value bet, race five, number five, Light Without. And my suggested bets, which is the bipod, goes as follows. First leg, one and two, by two and four, by one and three, by five and ten, by one, two, five and ten, by banker four, for 64 rand. Well, Grant, you are the man in form, and uh, we hope that uh, that form continues. And thank you for your valuable time. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Dees, and good luck to the punters tomorrow. Goodbye. Yeah, thanks to Grant Paddock. And on behalf of the Gallup TV team, uh, myself, Dees Diner, and for Grant Paddock, to you, the valued racing fan, have a blast, find all the winners, and hopefully it turns out to be a very successful day for you in Cabeja, where we raced at Fairview on the turf track. Until we meet again, you take care. Salani Ashley.